TV on air. We are now live in three, two, one. Welcome back to another time episode of Phoenix Wright. It's in the previous episode. We begin on day three investigation. We talked to Lana, we talked to Emma, we talked to Marshall. We even investigated through. We tried to investigate the chief pros not prosecutor, the chief of police's office, but we have no clue. We did not. We weren't able to do that. But for today, we're gonna continue on, and next up, we're gonna go. We're gonna go back into. Mm, we're gonna go back inside again, again. If you're happy for today's episode, make sure to hit that like button. Spoilers greatly appreciate to the channel. Here we go again. Hey, right, pal. Tech gumshoe. Were you in a meeting? I was, uh, just taking a breather. My feet hurt. From sitting so long in the meeting? Actually, I had to serve everyone coffee. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe's still out of the loop. Sorry, have either of you seen Mr. Edgeworth? Edgeworth? No. Why do you ask? Yeah. He's under fire from both the police department and the prosecutor's office. It's almost like the battle between you two in court. Now that sounds serious. That doesn't even make sense. Is it because of what my sister said? That's basically what it all boils down to. The falsified evidence two years ago. Now Mr. Edgewood has the whole world after his blood. Yikes. Alright gumshoe buddy old pal, let's talk. He always has Edgewood. But why would Edgeworth be blamed? It's not like he knew the evidence was forged. Lana Sky is the guilty party here, isn't she? Regardless, the prosecutor is responsible for the evidence he presents in court. Not only that, but as you know, there have been a lot of rumors going around about Mr. Edgeworth. Those who don't like him haven't been able to do anything because of his. Amazing talent as a prosecutor by now with this. Are there really so many people who hate him? In our world, only those with talent rise to the top. Mr. Edward not only had that, but he's young. There's no better recipe I know of for making enemies. Hey, rather not. Hey, Gumshoes, keep up the good work. Hey, rather not say that out loud. Yes, sir. Let's go out for lunch. Let's go out for lunch again sometime. My treat. Yes, sir. You gotta take me back to the joint sometime, okay, Gumshoe? Yes, sir. It seems you don't have any problem with enemies. Yeah, well, I'm careful not to stick out. Anyway, I'm a bit worried about him. Under all this pressure, I'm afraid Mr. Andrew just might crack. Actually, I took a look at the file earlier while the coffee was brewing. He seems generally concerned for Edgeworth. Well, did you find out anything? The only evidence Dark left behind was during his final attack. His final attack? You mean, when he killed Prosecutor Marshall, who was trying to protect some girl? Me. It seems Detective Gumption never realized Emma was the girl. That was when he left the most incriminating evidence of all. Well, what was it? Oh, oh, uh, let's see. I think it had something to do with the murder weapon. Oh, I forgot. Look, it's all written somewhere in here, okay? His powers of rec recollection never fail to impress. Maybe we should show him the murder weapon. It might jog his memory. Dark Crimes Joe Dark was 42 at the time of the crime. He was just your run-of-the-mill businessman. A businessman? What made him take to serial killings? One day on his way home from work, he hits someone with his car. With his car? So, it was an accident? An accident, yes, but it transformed him into an animal. Animal? He killed a man that witnessed the accident. Then he killed a lady who saw this accident. A kid walked just by then, so he killed him too. Then, when he was blowing, a dog came out to see him and was killed as well. Finally, he turned himself in. So he went, so he just saw... He just had bad luck seeing witnesses, that's all. That's all it was. Seems he was a pretty careless animal. Of course, this is all conjecture. There wasn't a single shred of evidence. So he turned himself in? Yes, but in the middle of his questioning, he fled and murdered his final victim. Prosecutor Marshall. 
That crime was witnessed by someone too, but fortunately he was arrested on the spot. It's a good thing that last witness was killed. That last witness. He must have been Emma. Okay, well, let's jog his memory if this was the freaking weapon. Where's that? Not that. Um, about this. Alright, don't tell me that. There's a tag attached to it with the label SL9 incident on it. I believe this would be the broken murder weapon you were speaking of? What are you doing with that? Ever since that case was closed, that knife's been locked away in the locker. Today, Detective Goodman was murdered. This suddenly disappeared from the locker. And was found in Mr. Edward's car muffler. That's it! Now I remember what that incriminating piece of evidence was. When you showed me that night, it all came back to me. Well, what is it, Detective? Quick, before you forget again. Alright. Back. Talk. This knife. It was Joe Dark's, wasn't it? That's right. We traced it back to the store he bought it at. And it had his fingerprints on it too. But no one actually witnessed him using to murder anyone, right? That's where his lock run out. When you take a good look at the knife, you'll see it's broken. You don't have to take a good look to notice that. Yeah, well, anyway. Take a guess where the broken off tip the knife was found. That's what did hit him in. Where was it? The victim, Neil Marshall, was carrying it. Inside his own body. What? It was found deep inside the stab wound. Did it match Dark's knife? You bet! Down to the last fiber. Fiber. That's pretty conclusive. Alright. Switchblade added to the court record. Well, there you have it. In a nutshell. That's all I know. Can I ask you one more thing? What is it? If it's money you need, you should ask Cheap Gant. It's not money, but it does concern the Chief. His office is a crime scene, right? It's where Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. The Chief's out of now, and his office is locked. But well, we'd like to have a look around if that's okay. Well, any detective ID card can unlock the car. The what? Door? What? Really? But if I let a civilian in there, I bet I'd be charged with breach of trust. Breach of trust? Simply put, I'd be canned. Oh. Sorry, pal. I don't plan on getting fired because of you. How about this ID? It was Detective Goodman's. That won't work either. The data was deleted the day, the day, the day he died. Okay, day to day he died, okay with it. Oh. So in other words, Gumshoe is our only chance of getting into that office. I wonder if there's something he, we could show him that would make him change his mind? Uh, What can we give him? Besides, we got nothing to give him to make him change his mind. There is completely nothing, so there has to be somewhere. Yep, there's only one place I can think of. So let's go back. Move. Uh, police department entrance. Move. Next up, underground parking lot. Move. Then, high prosecutor's office. 24th, high prosecutor's office, room 1202. I wonder if Edward is back yet. There he is! It looks like he's writing something. Ha! Huh, what are you doing here? He sure was quick to throw that paper on the floor. Tough day in court, huh? I've had to live the past two years with rumors flying around. What's another allegation to me? Cheer up, Mr. Edward. I'm ready for you. That's Edward for you. Always trying to hide his real feelings. So what do you want? I like some, but I don't have all day. Alright, then he's in a bad mood. Doc? Three things, huh? There's no excuse for what I've done. Two years ago, I used false evidence to obtain a guilty verdict. That's what it all breaks down to, and nothing I do can erase the fact. We 
But you didn't know, did you? I mean, that the evidence was falsified. The police department and the prosecutor's office share a bond of trust. If that bond is broken, we stand to lose everything. The police department's error is my error, my responsibility as the prosecutor in charge. That fact remains the same no matter what excuses I might have. Mr. Edgeworth! I take pride in my work. So tell me why. Why has it all come to this? Even Edgeworth can't keep this kind of emotion bottled up. Are you up for the trial tomorrow? Huh. Fresh last year's trial and now this one. It seems all you do is worry about me. To be honest, you're getting on my nerves. But Mr. Edgeworth, you can't just walk out of the trial. Tomorrow's the last day. It's too late to change prosecutors. I'll bet that's what my superiors are baking on. I never thought that case would come back to haunt me like this. What do you mean? That list of evidence, it seems too short. More, most lists run twice as long. It's only half as long as most lists? That is odd. After Neil Marshall was murdered, I became a prosecutor for that case. I may not have been part of the investigation, but at the time there was only one thing on my mind. I used the evidence I was given to prove the suspect guilty. Say, we just saw a picture taken around that time. That picture? Something seemed strange about it. Could you tell us again about what happened that day? The day Detective Gooden was murdered? You were participating in a ceremony over at the station, right? I never cared for ceremonies, but I had to attend that one. Because you were awarded this? Those receiving awards can't exactly skip out on the ceremony. I finished up the office that morning and drove over to the police department. You finished up at the office? Yes, just odds and ends. Clinical stuff. I didn't plan on returning to the office that day. That is, until I was asked to take something back. Take something back? This. Oh yeah, Chief Gant asked you to hold on to that, didn't he? Yes, it was a piece of evidence in a case that was closed half a year ago. He asked me to bring it back to the prosecutor's office. That's the story we heard yesterday. So you came back here to the prosecutor's office because the chief asked you to? That's right. Alright, let's show him that picture. Maybe that will lead any clues. Present. This picture was hanging on the wall of Chief Gant's office. Prosecutor, Prosecutor Neil Marshall, he had just started making a name for himself. Looks like this was taken when he received the King of Prosecutors trophy. Speaking of that, there's something that bothers me. Yes? The trophy Mr. Marshall is holding, it's a little different than yours. Yeah, it's gotta be. That's gotta be the murder weapon. Yes, you're right. I remember now. Remember what? That was the official prosecutor trophy used until that time. There's a story behind it. A story? Sounds interesting. Would you mind telling it to us? It's simple, really. Contradiction. That's what the award's based on. Contradiction? Why? This award originates from an ancient Chinese tale. In Chinese, the word contradiction is written with two characters. The first means halberd, and the second means shield. Have you heard this story? Me? Uh, sure. Everyone knows that. Why don't you tell it, though? For Emma's sake. Very well. Hello? Long ago in the kingdom of Chu, there was an arms merchant. One day, he presented the king with two items. The first was a halberd he claimed could slice through any shield or armor. The second was a shield he claimed would send any weapon. Hmm. Wait a minute. Objection! Those claims contradict each other! Right for Septon. But then again, you've heard this story before, right? Anyway, as you imagine, the very, the very description of those I have discredited them both. When Akeem pointed this out, the merchant was left speechless. And thus, the Chinese word for contradiction was born. Oh, I see. So the chip shield and the broken knife symbolize... 
Precisely so. They symbolize the merchant's items. The ancient tale ends with the merchant at a loss for words. But it's in our nature to pursue matters to their conclusion. Even if it results in something as ugly as this. Wow, thanks Mr. Edgeworth. I learned something new today. That's funny. If that's so, then why were you only given a shield? You don't have to ask Chief Gunt. Two years ago, he had the hardware part of the award abolished. Chief Gunt. So, the story is that a freak. He was given two items a spear or something that can pierce any shield. Meanwhile, the, uh, the shield will. will not freaking be pierced at all. Yeah, the story kind of confused even I'm just reading it along. But okay. Why? Excuse me. Would either of you care for a quarter pound of roast beef? Miss Star, I guess she's out of lunches. You certainly are the curious sort, aren't you? Kind of like the first person who sucked a cow's nipple to discover milk? Still, I never thought you'd go digging up a case from two years ago. Everyone in this trial was involved in the SL9 incident. Not only that, but the murder occurred on the very day the evidence from that case was due for the transferal. This can't all be attributed to be mere coincidence. Aren't you forgetting something? You know that little scene I happened to witness? The instant line of staff detected Grimlin with a knife. No matter how much of the past you dig up, it won't change what I saw. Roast beef is meant to be saved with when eaten. Miss Star's hatred toward Lana. It all dates back to two years ago. Alright, let's talk. What happened? Jill Dark. That's a name I hope not soon forget. We trailed him for half a year. Oh, the pressure. Still, I don't think I was even ever more alive than I was then. Those days were steamier, steamier than a bowl of hot gravy. Poor old Jake Marshall though. He must have been going through hell. You mean because of his brother's death? They were close, those two. After Neil died, something took over Jake. He became obsessed. Seeing Jake like that made her all the more desperate. Her? Lana Sky. My sister? The best of the best were put on that SL9 case. Of course, they were led by that legendary duo. Lana and Chief Gant. Alright. That legendary pair was the reason we were able to keep up our investigation. That's why we're so shocked over how it turned out. You mean with the forging of the evidence? Don't get me wrong, Joe Dark got what he deserved. Still, it was obvious the evidence produced in court was being manipulated. Items our team never found were would suddenly appear, while other items were kept secret. But you didn't have proof anything illegal was done. I'm proof enough of what happened. After that case, all of us save Goodman were relieved of our duties. Most without even so much as an explanation. Then Lana Sky transferred to the prosecutor's office and became chief prosecutor. Lana always wanted to be a prosecutor. No, nothing's quite as simple as it appears. Huh? Lana Sky was merely being used as a pawn. That's my take on the matter. She was being used? Damon Gatton and Lana Sky. Two years ago, Gatton was chief detective and Lana's second command. They were the best. He set up all kinds of cases together, didn't they? Damon Gatton's magnetism in particular was almost unreal. His magnetism? By that, I mean his ability to attract evidence. He produced the most incredible evidence in the cases he handled. Incredible evidence? You mean... 
Oh yes, there were rumors about him even back then. No one dared confront him though. I take it she's talking about forged evidence? Back then everyone looked up to Lana. All the detectives wanted to be like her. Really? Oh yes, myself included. I was a fool, really. She hated anything crooked and always watched out for the other detectives. That's why she was so concerned for Jake. Mr. Marshall? When Jake's brother was murdered, she felt as if she had lost her own brother. If it wasn't for her, I don't think Jake would ever have recovered from his shock. That's what makes it all the more infuriating. It's Star. That's why I'll never be able to forgive her. Why did she have to turn so cold after that? Being used. Lana, tr Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office two years ago, didn't she? Yes, thanks to Chief Cat's powerful influence. Chief? That's right, having solved the SL9 case, his position as Chief was secure. There was only one thing left for him to control, and then no one could stand in his way. The prosecutor's office. What? You mean, that's why Lana was transferred? If he could control the chief prosecutor, he could control the prosecutor's office. That must have been his goal all along. But how could he control Lana? I don't know, but one thing's for sure. Ever since that case ended, she never been the same. It's only logical to conclude. There must have been a reason for her change. At last, I'm finally getting close to the bottom of this ugly mess. Thank you, Miss Star. You listen to me, Ricky. It takes more than just ingredients to create fine cuisine. I hope you turn out to be a better cheap chef than I've been. Oh, righty there. How much time do I got? Where I'm cooking? After being that, 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 that. We got. I guess we'll save that for the next episode. We'll go back. We'll save it for the next episode. Next episode may be a little bit longer, but we'll take the chances. Anyways, that'll be it for today's episode, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure to that like button, comments, for if you're new here, like to see the show and the show because I see me on. I'm starting out.